Hello everybody and welcome to another RCT2 Reviews. Today we are looking at what is quite possibly one of the most well-known and highest ranked new element designs of all time. This is El Enciero. El Enciero was built by G-Wiz and Disneyland with an H um, and was a, uh, an example of a B&M inverted coaster in a nice Spanish setting. And at the time, which was 13 years ago, it garnered nearly a 90% score uh, on New Element and uh, was one of the highest ranked designs of the time. Uh, and at the time, you know, it was described as flawless by some and just uh, it became a super well represented uh, park and was highly referenced by all sorts of people, me included. Um, when it had first come out. So let's jump in and take a look at this um, because it's interesting to see 13 years on how things have and have not held up. Uh, it, it's still what I think a incredibly impressive design and um, really does kind of set the bar for detail and just kind of interesting things and like standard type details that I think a lot of parks should have. Um, so here at our entrance, we have this nice Spanish architecture. It's a great archway. Uh, this is based off of uh, real architecture out there, and it actually looks pretty good uh, when you compare it to the um, the real thing. What's kind of neat about this, and you can see right off the bat, is that this one is entirely a facade. You spin around the map, and you get with uh, this armature structure behind it. Nice parking lot and all sorts of uh, little details here, including some of these trams here uh, up on stilts on the one side which I kind of like they're tilted and then also the rapids boats here uh, in this boneyard definitely a little cleaner than I expect you would see on a lot of boneyards but still pretty interesting um, and then on kind of outside the park almost you have this great fountain and uh, tram here with the station sort of cut into the uh, mountainside or this little I, I don't know if it's meant to be faux or not, but a um, little mound where the train goes through and the coaster station's on the back side and this train station's on the other side. But uh, some really great architecture. Pretty simplistic when you look at it overall, but not in a bad way. Like, it's very clean, uh, so the, the lines are, are good. It's um, not super repetitive, uh, but there's detail there. Lots of nice trim pieces and everything. Love the spare train back here and the... Uh, a little bit of sort of back of house type stuff. Um, same thing with these gates on this side and uh, just all the little details. Um, D was is one of the earlier ones to do both stairs and ramp at locations and you can see that the whole way around. Uh, all of the different walkways have both stairs and ramp throughout. Um, but you get over to this side and we get into some more architecture here and we'll get to the coaster in a minute but I kind of want to work through this progressively. I love this little fountain and this little square here. Um, that's some quasi-Spanish type architecture. I think here is maybe where it doesn't hold up quite as well, where it definitely gets a little bit messy, a little bit um, over-detailed in some spots, and the scale kind of gets thrown off a little bit when you come from this giant building on this side over to something like this. Uh, it doesn't quite hold up as well, but the nice thing is that the coaster sort of distracts from all of that. So if you come across this bridge here, then you can see this nice diagonal bridge crossing the coaster. Um, a lot of you know, open space here, good plaza space, uh, nice manicured gardens and everything. Then you get to the entrance piece here, uh, which, reminder, that this was before Open RCT, so it was before uh, you had all the easy tile inspector things, other things. So there's a lot of these little path details here that are uh, glitching at the moment as uh, I mouse over it, but um, were difficult to do. Um, I do really like the different variations of the dirt pathway here, the different colors. Uh, you make this invisible here and you can kind of see that as a motif uh, throughout. But I have our queue line that wraps all the way around here, nod to some of the Cedar Fair things. There's a drink stall mid queue. I'll get up to this open station and uh, let's take a look. So the open station is kind of reminiscent of some of the B&Ms that you have in California. Um, and the ride itself color wise based sort of off of uh, Silver Bullet at Knott's Berry Farm. So you've got the lift hill 
and the lift hill supports both in the crimson and then we're changing over to the the red and the yellow track elsewhere uh, so a different kind of bold scheme here pretty long lift hill uh, definitely not helped by the fact that it's diagonal so it's going to appear stretched out and longer uh, but the the setting for this bnm is sort of or the the timeline for this just based on some of the details here like the pre-drop and some of the other details it's a uh, kind of a late 90s bnm um, i would say <clears throat> so here we come off of the lift hill into this kind of mini drop sort of great bear-esque before diving down the straight drop into the trench and a big loop, another trench and tunnel, and this kind of fast helix element. And really, we're not going to slow down for the rest of the layout here. Um, go up through this Immelman inversion, diving over the Rapids Ride, <clears throat> through the zero G roll that's nicely positioned over the entrance, then down into this trench. And it doesn't really look like a trench from this side until you turn this way. You can kind of see that half of the track is missing. Um, and wrapping around up into the brakes and even here we're going 34 miles per hour as we hit those diagonal brakes uh, not functional but uh, definitely visually there what i like about this coaster is the amount of interaction that you get so you've got this uh going into and out of the batwing element here you're kind of over top on this side diving underneath on the other side that's uh, a pretty impressive design there and then I really like this lattice underneath using the um, steeplechase track for this fencing down below and you can see a little bit behind but it's a nice uh, way to detail up a cliffside and really have that um, kind of vertical height without it being too kind of repetitive so we continue on looking at the architecture which I, I honestly the more that i look at this over time i find the architecture outside of the entrance to be one of the weaker elements of this design as far as how it's held up but i think at the time it was definitely suitably detailed and interesting um to me now it looks like a little bit of a mismatch um some of this especially like we already said but you go over to some of the forms like we've got this kind of great looking church type structure here with the stained glass and the towers um, you have the the typical cross-shaped form of that but then there's this diagonal bit on the front of it um, that opens up onto the uh, seating area and then on the side you've got this little kind of entrance here that you don't necessarily see super well this uh, restaurant awning uh, with the coaster track there and this uh, support or this tower that doesn't really have a support up underneath so architecturally it's a little bit weird um, not to say that I don't think it, it's good um, I do think it's there um, I worry a little bit about the color choice because you have this very clean um, just very nicely put together architecture here where you have the uh, white as your primary color your tan as your secondary your orange is your accent color here and then you're looking at the um, pathway details as sort of the the additional pop of a different color here and the grass as well to offset against all of this whereas you look at something like um, the architecture here and you're looking at seven or eight different colors and a bunch of different textures and everything that's that's where the the cleanliness of the architecture comes in is the consistency there but uh, the forms themselves are just really nice. I like this curved one here with the um, the side friction track that's curved. Uh, really helps to give some new forms to it, and I think that's what a lot of people liked about this design when it had come out. Is that we really weren't seeing these curved forms, diagonal forms, especially. Really, they weren't a thing. So it's it's an improvement on on that and now it's commonplace so i think somebody looking at this for the first time may go okay well i don't necessarily see why it's that special even though i think it is still an incredible quality design but that's at the time for me what really set this one off is that there was all these diagonals there's all these curves it was really one of the earlier uh, designs i think to break the grid of the game and really set aside or set itself apart from some of the others so the rapids ride here i think was doing the same sort of thing so we had the traditional moving monorail track for the uh, 
uh, moving station, which is glitchy as hell, but it was something everybody did, myself included. Um, and I'm not sure there's a better way to do it still, even though I'm not a huge fan. But to get this great drop out of the station with this curved awning over top and the coaster track underneath, really using the track texture um, well here. I think that was a thing in RCT2 uh, that coming out of um, RCT1, there was less use for track architecture, but this brought back a lot of that in realistic and interesting ways. Uh, so vertical lift here, which is another cool hacking touch, uh, which was a little bit of a surprise at the time because it was still a little of a bit of a unique thing, especially the coaster track here that you can see, uh, which is just a, almost a hidden detail. Uh, that is synced up with the Rapids boat to deliver it to the top and drop down. That's such a cool detail and uh, definitely something that you wouldn't necessarily know unless you were looking super closely at this. Love the diagonals uh, for this, like we talked about. So we have this whole section here. Have the track up underneath, which is a little bit strange in that you wouldn't be running this on a track, but um, it does work pretty well through here. Um, this is a great scene with the arch bridge coming across and then our uh, rapid section down here using the rapids pieces. I think it just looks great. Um, and that arch is super, super, uh, you know, visually stunning. We're a nice little lift hill here. And then uh, this is a pretty cool element, I feel like, uh, where it wraps around underneath this bridge and then around the dining area here. Really, this is the kind of nice thoughtful park making and interactivity and how spaces of things work with each other there's no wasted space here it's done really really well and it also sets this up excellently so you don't have too many straight sections here so you have this curve section in followed by this curve section around going into this whirlpool type drop which is a pretty hard one to convey with a rapids boat but using the merge track and then the waterfall pieces you get this pretty cool element there as it wraps around and that goes back up underneath your lift and then up and into the the station once again i think really for me that's a lot of where she was and uh, disneyland and, and they have 50 percent credit each for this um, where they really excelled was interaction and elevation changes this rapids ride takes a huge variety of elevation changes and very few of them are actually level with the pathway it's either under or it's over um, you zoom out and you look at the coaster here where the coaster you're under you're over you're under you're over top then you're over top here but you cross over now we're going into this trench crossing back over and you have this nice back and forth as far as crossovers go so you're over here you're under here you're underneath of here you're over it's a lot of these back and forth um, uh, kind of just detail throughout. Um, and the same thing with the way that the pathways work. There's kind of the main pathway and there's these side pathways which provide viewing areas and um, spaces to come watch the ride. I love the little ride restricted fencing type mesh right here that is right in front of the coaster. So obviously the coaster is going to come right up to it. So uh, this is a great viewing area that you can look at and get super close to the coaster without uh, being unsafe about it. And then with the structures themselves, this is a pretty cool structure and it also works across two levels. So if you look at this side, you have a two-story structure here with this great diagonal entrance using the mine train um, uh, vehicle or the track. Then you have some stairways here and you wrap around and there's a nice upper level building here. Um, while I don't necessarily think it's as kind of classy looking as your front entrance, I love the forms on this and just the way that the, the structure works on not just one but two different levels and making use of all sides of it without being, um, without having a dead zone, I think. And certainly credit to the prowess of Chiwiz for the roller coaster details, which I'm, I'm guessing are largely him. Um, we have your extended spine monorail track for the uh, lift hill and the, the brake run here. The incredibly nice detailed transfer track here. Uh, we have a little maintenance car uh, underneath. Um, two pieces of transfer track here. Um, the uh, just structural details, the supporting details. Um, 
he was one of the best at using these uh, tunes B and M supports. I, I think the the just the attention to detail on those sorts of things is a lot of what elevates this from a really good design to a really great design. Um, and his coaster layouts were always smooth. They were big and bold, but they also were very smooth at the same time. So I, I think that while our uh, or the architecture maybe doesn't quite hold up in some instances, I think overall I could say that this is still a pretty incredible design. That's still one of those that ought to be studied, um, just as far as uh, examples of what's good in the game and park making, place making, and pathway to ride, ride to pathway, ride to landscape, pathway to landscape, those sorts of interactions need to go. Um, this sort of thought process behind some of these things is really what elevates this up. And it's almost one of those intangible items that is tough to describe. But when you see it here put together, it really makes a lot of sense. And uh, you can really see how those things elevate this to another level. So... 13 years on, I think El Enciero is still a pretty incredible design and is still holding up um, better than a lot of designs that came after it. Uh, it's still one of those that I go back to every now and then, and you definitely see pop up in top lists of you know favorite designs, favorite um, maps over time. It's not surprising to still see it there because I think it's, uh, it's held the test of time uh, for sure. So that's all for today. A quick little review here, but um, I think this is worthy of talking about, and a lot of newer folks to the game may not have missed a lot of these older type designs, and these are the things that really shaped the way that a lot of us build parks nowadays. Um, so hopefully this taught you something new and uh, may want to get you to download the park and take a look yourself. Uh, so definitely do that. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, but until next time, thank you very much for watching. If you have any requests that you'd like to see, feel free to leave me a note or uh, message me uh, in any of the comments. So thank you very much for watching, and have a great day. Bye now.